WebDriver IO runs on top of Node.js, which means that we can take advantage of its functionality and ecosystem to improve our tests. In this video, I'll show you three non-WebDriver IO specific ways to improve your test writing abilities. We're going to start out with a fundamental programming addition. Because our test file is run through Node, we can use all the programmatic features that JavaScript has to offer us. While it's important to test common use cases, sometimes we want to push the limits of the website and see if it breaks. One way to do this is trigger multiple clicks on a series of elements in rapid succession. This is sometimes known as monkey testing. Let's add a new test to our accordion.js file. We'll be testing that the accordion should be able to gracefully handle several quick clicks on different accordion items. One way to do this is to copy and paste the same browser click call again and again and again. A better solution would be to use a for loop. I'll create a standard for loop setting the limit to 20 clicks. Inside the loop, I need to get the item to click on. I'll use a mod operator, which will return the value 0, 1, or 2, depending on where we are in the loop count. We need to add 1 to this number in order to get the right CSS selector. Next, I'll call the click command, passing in the number of the item we want to click on. This number will increment from 1 to 3, then back to 1 and around again as we progress through the loop. Once the loop is complete, we'll run an assertion ensuring that the last item we clicked is now the active element. We could also check the other items don't have an active class, but I wanted to keep this example brief. Let's run the test and see it in action. Thankfully it works, and our stress test was successful. Basic JavaScript functionality is nice, but it would be even better to use functionality other folks have already written. In this next example, we're going to use a third-party API to load test data into our review form, submitting and verifying that it's added correctly. First, we need to install an NPM package called SyncRequest. There are many request libraries like it out there, which all accomplish the same task of getting data from a third-party website. I chose sync request because its synchronous style matches nicely with WebDriver IO's sync mode. At the top of our review.js file, we'll start things off by loading the sync request library. Next, we'll create a new test checking that it allows multiple reviews. Inside our test, we're going to call the sync request functionality and ask it to get JSON data from the JSON placeholder website. This data is formatted to match a series of comments on a blog post. We're going to use the email and name fields from the data to fill out our form multiple times. Since the response comes back as a plain string, we need to parse it with the Node.js JSON utility. Your code may differ depending on what library and API you use. With our comments loaded as an array of objects, we next want to loop through each to use for our review. We'll use the built-in array for each method to do this. The first argument we get back is a singular comment followed by the numeric index representing where that comment lives in the array. We can now call our custom submit review command, passing in the comment details we need. Next, we'll run an assertion checking that the specific review was added. We need to use the nth of type selector here to match the expected position of the new comment in the HTML structure. We add three to the index because there are two pre-existing reviews when the page loads. The extra one comes from the fact that the index is zero-based, while nth of type isn't. We'll follow the same pattern for our review text as well. Saving the file, we can now run the test to see it in action. It happens pretty quickly, but you may have been able to see the multiple reviews added to our page. Again, the data for this review was loaded from the JSON placeholder website using an HTTP request inside our Node.js file. While you may not want to rely on a third-party resource for your test data needs, I did want to introduce you to the idea of sending data to and from servers, which is especially useful when you need to preload information before text execution. Using this technique can enable you to create users or add specific test data on the system under test in a reliable and automated way. The last integration we're going to look at is a way to improve our testing workflow. 
By tapping into the NPM ecosystem that lives as part of Node.js, we're able to get a lot of functionality with only a little bit of effort. For this exercise, we're going to add the onChange module to our test script, giving us a way to run our tests automatically on file change without us re-entering the test command. The onChange module works by watching specific files for changes, then re-triggering whatever command you passed into it during setup. Just like sync request, we need to install the onChange module. Nothing too complicated here. Next, we'll open up our package.json file. OnChange works as a CLI, otherwise known as a command line interface. This is the same thing our WDIO command is. We're going to create a new script called testwatch. In it, we'll call the onChange CLI tool, then pass in the files we want to watch. Here, we're watching CSS, JS, or HTML files inside our sample site folder, and also any JavaScript files in our test folder. Finally, we define that we want to run the WDIO command if any of those files change. Back in the terminal, let's call this script. Unlike npm test, we need to add a run to our script call, as test watch is not a common npm command. With our script running, we can make a change to our file, then see that the test suite automatically kicks off. This is pretty nice, but it does require always having to check the terminal for the result of the test. We can add another NPM package to send system notifications during our test runs, helping us know the state of things. Node Notifier is an NPM package that sends system event notifications for many different operating systems. I'll demo it on a Mac, but a Windows system with the proper software installed would work just as well. Again, we'll run an NPM install to download the Node Notifier module. With that, let's open up our configuration file. At the top of our file, we'll require the Node Notifier library. Next, we'll scroll down to the Hooks section. Hooks allow us to add scripts to run before, during, or after our tests. The first hook we'll link into is on Prepare. In it, we want to add a notification that our test run has started running. This is a good reminder that our tests are being run. Next, we'll add a notification if any tests fail. Webdriver IO passes the result of the test into the after test hook, allowing us to check it and run code based on the results. Finally, we'll add an onComplete hook to notify that the test run is complete. With all that set up, let's restart our watch script, then make a breaking change to our test and see the resulting failure notification. This might be overkill for some type of dev work, but functionality like this can be handy in specific situations, especially when you're debugging a test. It's cliche to say, but the possibilities are really endless when it comes to programmatic extension of your tests. I would say the biggest limitation is that we don't want to make our tests too complicated, which can introduce bugs and faulty tests to our suite. If you're only calling a command once or twice, maybe you don't need a for loop. In my opinion, a little repetition in a test file is worth it to decrease the risk of introducing a logic-based bug in the code that's supposed to prevent bugs. Regardless of my thoughts, this wraps up Module 5. In the next module, we'll jump into page objects, starting off with the browser element command.